Good afternoon again. In our, in our league, we have a policy around coaches attending meetings. If coaches are going to be absent from meetings, I have to give permission. So one of the really, really good permission slips I've written was actually for Coach Fisher this year. So Jimbo was at our first day of SEC spring meetings, but needed to make a trip to Minnesota because of treatment for his son, Ethan. And I've spoken about the fund that Jimbo and his family have created called the Kids First Fund. It's a nonprofit to raise money for research to find a cure for Fanconi anemia. And what I've enjoyed with Jimbo, we've had any number of conversations, whether it's about football or recruiting or the structure of college football, is the passion that comes out when we talk about his son's health, but also the effort to find a cure. They've raised over $12 million for Fanconi anemia research over 12 years. And if you do ask them, Jimbo can give you details that will blow you away about research and the promise of this research for the future. My privilege to introduce Texas A&M's head football coach, Jimbo Fisher. Howdy. Great to be back again. As uh, we see, when it, once this starts, it's uh, it's on, and uh, very excited to get going for the season. Uh, I think the kids are. Things are happening, and like I said, Greg, as, as he talked, and I was listening to him earlier, and all the different things that are going on in college football and all the different scenarios. But the good thing about the whole thing and why we all got in this business many, many years ago is to be able to coach the game and play the game. At the end of the day, that's still where we find, find our greatest moments when we're on the practice field and we're on the game field. And uh, coaching these young guys and developing these young guys and, you know, very excited about our team this year, the things that are going on, what we're doing, how we're doing them. Uh, but first, before I get into all that, I want to speak about a loss we had in our program. There's been a lot of coach. We lost a coach named Terry Price, who was our defensive end coach, and a lot of y'all know him. He's, he's had a long stint in the SEC. He was at Ole Miss in two different stints. He was at Auburn for a long time. Of course, he was at A&M, and then, of course, he played at A&M. And uh, we lost a great Aggie, but more importantly, I think the world lost a great person. I really do. I think Terry is one of the people, my dad always had a saying that he called him real people. A guy who never judged you, who took, you could take his word, whatever he said, how he did it. You knew when you gave him a job, it was going to be done the right way. And he was a selfless staff guy. He was a selfless husband. He was a selfless father. Whatever needed to be done, nothing was too, too little or too big for Terry Price to handle. And uh, our program and our family, at A&M and uh, the whole college football world lost a great man and uh, just wanted to remember him. He is a, and a lot of y'all probably have had relationships with him at different places and different, of course, at A&M and the different schools you've had, but I can't reiterate one of the best human beings I've ever been around. And uh, it was a very tough loss for us and, uh, you know, we're going to be greatly be missed. And, uh, but he'd be the first one up here to say, hey, get lined up and go play again. And that's the way he played and that's the way he was as a person. So, uh, but he always be in our thoughts and prayers and uh, he's an Aggie forever. So going on from that, uh, like I say, very excited about this season. Uh, as we know, uh, everybody's got a thousand questions on everything that goes on, but we as coaches, we focus on the process of getting our team ready to play and how we got to play. Uh, very excited about it. And people say, well, what, what makes you excited? Every coach says they're excited every year. We are, but the things that got me the most excited, I think one is our leadership. I think you'll see that today in some of the guys in which you speak with. Uh, and I say, every team has leadership. But to me, leadership is how it affects the other guys on the football team. How your leadership can really, can they translate their personalities, their work ethic, their culture of how they want things done to the other players. And, you know, and the players have to accept that. And I think our, our leadership of our football team has me very excited in how they've put their stamp on our team, what they see in our team, how they want our team to go, which we've had many, many meetings on and reiterated. And like I say, we manage a team. They, they, they do the day-to-day -day functions of how to get things done and the relationships. And I'm very proud of that group. I'm excited to, to see how we translate into fall practice and try into the games in which we have and what we're trying to do. But uh, very, very, the experience in which we have, I think last year with some trials and tribulations we had with some injuries and key guys that got out and came back and got back out, I think is, is benefited with playing a lot of young players. Now you're bringing a lot of those guys back with experience. And I think our, our two deep is probably has as much experience as we've had since we've been here. 
Uh, feel very confident in that group, and I say some of your problems a year ago can be your strengths this year, but again, those have to translate onto the field and the things that go on. But uh, like that dynamic of where we're at, and I think there's a team with a, with a chip on its shoulder. I think it's a team that has something to prove, and we know that. There's nothing, nothing to hide about that, how we got to play, but you can't become outcome-oriented in that. We have to create the habits on a day-to-day -day basis, and they have to understand the, the strength is in their unity but also that their individual responsibility create a, a habit for them to be counted upon in the situations in which they're counted upon and allow us to execute in, in the most critical moments of every game. And as in, say in this league, no matter whether you won 11 games or you won five games like we did, there's such a fine line in those games of games you won and games you lost. It's making a few critical plays at a few critical times in the game and finding those inches in which you've got to fight, scratch, and claw for each and every play. And then that's how quick it can go from the top to the bottom real quick. And uh, the team that can find that. I like the dynamic of our group to be able to do that this year. And we'll, but we'll find out. There's no, no promises, no things. I, I like the group. I think the way we practice. And you say that, you know, there's a saying I always say, your action speaks out loud. I can't hear what you're saying. You know, and your action, whatever you say is one thing, but your actions. And I see that in our attendance, for instance. How you do anything is how you do everything. We had the highest GPA we've ever had as a football team in our last semester. Kids are going to school, going to class, going to study hall, taking those things uh, great. The attendance in the fourth quarter workouts, the effort in them, the practices we had in the spring, the attitude, the demeanor, smile on their face, busting their tails. Man, it, 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 was, it was a fun thing to be a part of. And uh, like I say, sometimes when a guy gets hungry, it's fun to watch and uh, how we're going about our business. As I say, recruiting is going well. We're recruiting a very good class right now. And I always say, people say, what is your culture? What's your dynamic? When you recruit well, your culture is fine, and I say this for one reason. Our players are our best recruiters. Our players are doing the best job, because as soon as the coaches walk out of the room, the players are going to tell you, they're on this team, they're crazy, that isn't how things are, we want you here, or this is the way things are, and this is the way things are going to be done. And our, our, staff, our players have done a tremendous job in that regard, too. So it's creating a great atmosphere, it's creating great momentum, and uh, now we just have to translate into playing and finishing off this uh, summer in great condition, great health, and going into fall practice you know, report April, I mean, August 1st and get on the field August 2nd, I believe it is, and, and get going to what we have to do and what we have to achieve. Like I say, we're in the SEC West, which is the best league in ball, and in the SEC in period. Got great, great schedule coming up. Got great non-conference games. Got great conference games, home and away, which you always do in this league. So we got a lot of challenges. You got to play on the road and you got to play at home. So we have a lot of things that we have to uh, accept on a, on a weekly basis. And more importantly, on a daily basis, to create habits that allow us to fight for the inches and do the things we have to do to be successful in everything we're doing. And what I'm telling you is nothing new. There's no secret to this madness. It's, it's about execution. It's about having a plan for what you want to do and guys that can do it. Uh, our staff has done a great job. I love our staff right now. Uh, DJ Durkin on defense is doing a really good job. Of course, we lost Terry, which was very critical. Elijah. Robinson is doing a great job in our, in our D-line group, along with TJ and, and BGA on our, in our secondary group. And we'll name, and I'll get into it. People will ask me, who's going to be your next coach? We, we have an idea when we get back, and we'll announce things as we get back, and we get right before camp and where we get started and what we're going to do in the transition from in with Terry. Offensively, Bobby's done a great job, fit in very well, been a great staff guy, has done a great job recruiting, has done a great job coaching, uh, fit right in with what we're doing. Our, our staff loves him, uh, Steve Adazio. Of course, we've been with us in the offensive line. I think uh, getting the second year under what we're doing and how we're doing it and the change, some of the things that we're tweaking and turning. He's done a great job on, has great ideas himself. James Coley, been a coordinator. Tremendous Damien Craig, he's done a great job of receivers. Markrell Blackwell is a running back coach coming over from Ole Miss, has done a great job. So, very excited about that group and, and ready to go when uh, fall camp starts. So, great. all right. Thank you, coach. If you have a question, raise your hand. Avery, Kinsey, and Jim have the microphones. We're going to start right here, right in front of you, Coach, about four rows back on the right. aisle. Hey, Jimbo, Colin Wilson with the Action Network. Schematically, are we going to see the pro style under center play action or the Bobby Petrino four wide uh, power spread? Have you ever watched Bobby? Bobby's a lot of underneath play action. <laughs> no, but I'm not going to get into schematics and four wide. We do everything. We're not going to get into that. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and say exactly what we're going to do or how we're going to do it. But we'll have a good plan. We'll, and then the key is we've got to execute it and do it and get the ball to the right guys and the right playmakers and, you know, be sol solid across the front, get the quarterback doing what he's supposed to do, and, and get to the playmakers and let them play. That's, that's, that's your goal on offense. And not turn it over and score points. Coach, we'll go over here to our right, the right section, Robert. 
Over to our right. Robert Sessa, the Bryan College Station Eagle. Jimbo, as you come here and go into the season, do you feel added pressure? Because you've never been in this situation before. I don't. Listen, Coach, we live in the pressure every day. We put more pressure on ourselves than anybody out there ever puts on us. And there's no added pressure because what good does that do? Does worrying make you any better? No. What you got to do is get to solutions. You got to line up and understand what went right, what went wrong, what, you, what kind of team you have now. And did each team changes year by year. I say a team has one year life expectancy. Feature what it does well and get it to execute at the highest critical moments of games consistently throughout games. Like I say, most games are lost. They're not won. And what I mean by that, the other team's inability to be consistent and repeat something over and over and over, and that's what our goal is, to be able to do that. So, but to answer your question about pressure, it's not that you don't feel pressure. We feel pressure every day. We feel pressure in everything we got to do. So there's no added pressure. It's just a matter of dealing with what you have to deal with and go execute and, and try to win football games. Coach, we'll go right in front of you on the front row. Coach Ken Caps from the uh, Football Writers Association of America. I know it's still one year away, but give us your thoughts on uh, playing your old rival uh, Texas again, either every year or every other year. I think it's great. I think it's great for college football. I think it's great for Texas and Tex Texas A&M. I mean, I think any time the old rivalries are renewed, I've you know, been a lot of rivalries, been fortunate to be in college football a long time and being some of the great rivalries in college football. And this one, A&M and Texas definitely is a great rivalry, and I think it's great for us, and it's great for them, and it's great for college football in general. And I'm uh, very excited for it to happen. Coach, we're going to go all the way back to our left, back of the room, last row. Brandon Marcello, 24-7 Sports. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimbo, you got several former head coaches on your staff, mm -hmm. Bobby Petrino being the latest you've brought in. A lot of very, um, I guess you could say, very upfront personalities. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that in the, in the coaching staff room when a lot of people, I mean, a lot of us, including myself, wonder how that's all going to work out if it gets into a volatile situation? A volatile? Why would it be in a volatile situation? Guys, coach, have you, have you ever been in any, in any staff room that, didn't, that doesn't have arguments or disagreements? Every coaching staff in America has an argument or a disagreement. That's part of it. But no, it's just, I'm the boss. We're the boss. We'll do it at the end of the day. But you listen to everybody's opinion. Everybody can voice their opinion. I, I want guys with opinion. I want guys who have knowledge. I want guys who make you think. I want guys to create different uh, narratives that brought to the table that can help us. I think that's the, I think it's the best thing you have. And I think that's one of the reasons, some of the reasons you hired them, to do different scenarios and different things like that. But as far as that, we all have great respect for each other, and it's been tremendous. We've had great, we've had great response and haven't had any issues. Coach, we'll go back over to our right-hand side, over by the SEC logo, right over here to your right. Hi, Coach Travis Brown of the Bryan College Station mm -hmm. Eagle. Uh, you know you promoted Elijah Robinson a couple years ago to associate head coach, and he's been able to do some and he's speaking. He's also co-defense co coordinator. Co-defense coordinator. He's mm -hmm. been able to do some uh, speaking. Well, why is it important to you for him to have some of those opportunities, and do you see a future head coach in him? Yeah, I do. I think because his growth and maturity and the things he's done and within our program and the respect we have and, and, and his – uh, understanding the big picture of what we're trying to do and how we do things, and that's the role he's in. And if there's things that I cannot be at or I have to be somewhere with, with a different obligation within our organization or a family situation, I feel very comfortable. Elijah does a great job with that. And uh, I think he's a bright, uh, say, up and coming. And but not say up and coming, I think he's arrived. I mean, he's done a great job. He's a bright young coach. He does a great job for us. And we're very fortunate to have him. Coach, we'll go right here in the middle, left section, second row. Bob. Uh, hey, Jimbo. Bob Hello. Holt, Arkansas Democrat. Yes, sir. Is that um, you know, by Petrino, I think this is the first time he's been an assistant since 2002. So he's used to calling plays, mm -hmm. being the guy in charge. You, you've been calling plays for probably mm -hmm. forever. So what's the dynamic going to be like on game day? Does he have total freedom to call the plays? And kind of how will that work? And is it hard for you to give up, you know, play calling? No, it, it, there's a lot of things. And you're still involved in what goes on. I'm not going to get into what we're doing, how we're doing it. Again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to avoid anything. I just don't want to create you, you create advantages or narratives out there for what goes on but listen I, Bobby was hired for a reason and he's a tremendous coach and tremendous guy and a tremendous uh, football mind tremendous recruiter he's done a great job recruiting since he's been there uh, everything he does and uh, now he'll call a lot of I mean hopefully he'll call the game we'll have suggestions on things we do and whether it's offense defense every coach is always involved that's it's a more collective thing than people want to give it room for. And then when you, but when you get to call and you get on a roll, you got to have a guy that can do it. And I think Bobby can definitely do that and doesn't as well as anybody in college football. I have great respect for me and him. I've always, we've had a great admiration for each other for a long time and his knowledge and his production and what he's done. Okay, coach, we'll go in the section right in front of me in the middle, the red shirt. Okay. Hey coach, Andrew Stefaniak, Locked on Aggies. 
Uh, Devon A. Chain moves on to the next level, mm -hmm. and so currently, you know, it's a running back room. A lot of guys who got a handful of carries last year, but mm -hmm. not a ton. And then you bring in, of course, true freshman Reuben Owens. I just kind of wanted to hear your thoughts on the room and the outlook for it heading into the season. Very excited for it. I thought they had great springs. I mean, you go back. Amari Daniels, I think, is a very natural runner of the football. Does a great job with it. Le'Veon Moss, extremely talented, fast, big, athletic. All both those guys can catch the football. Reuben Owens, the same way, fast. And he's he's added a bunch of weight since he's been there in speed. All those guys have size, they have power. Uh, you know, David Bailey is a guy that's come also come in as a transfer. I mean, guys have been very productive. So, I mean, I think it's in the Ernest Crown over at fullback, Jerry Johnson at fullback. But I like our tailback room. I really do. I mean, Le'Veon, Amari, Ruben, those guys are talented. You can, they can be out. They catch the ball out of the backfield. They can run it. They can split out. They have power, speed, and they have breakaway speed. And they're strong. I mean, I think it's a very good room. Again, their production is based off they, you know, they were behind a chain in some situations and where he did, but you know, and we weren't as productive on offense to have the number of at bat and things we needed a year ago. But those guys can play and uh, look forward. I think it's a very talented room. Coach will go over to our right along this near aisle. Hey, Coach Steve Moulton, WZZN. Hope you're doing well. Good. How you doing? I, I'm good, thank you. Uh, th during the spring meetings, uh, there was the subject of tampering. And I wanted to ask about tampering, how big of an issue is it, and what are some answers you think surrounding tampering? I think if people tamper, they have to be caught. I mean, but again, it goes back to you have to prove those things too, and it can't be just allegations or rumors. I mean, I think you have concrete evidence, and you know, you, you try not to, and, and, and people say, well, how do you deal with that? I think you gotta keep an open line of communication with your players. I think you gotta keep a great open line of communication with things that are going on with them and things that are happening with them and, and being able to talk with them. And if you catch them, you gotta punch them. You gotta punch them severely, in my opinion, when you get into those things. And uh, that's, you know, and, and unfortunately, that's a, that's a part of college football that is, is becoming a bigger issue because you don't have to sit now with the transfer portal. So, I mean, those things are out there. But, you know, listen, everybody's dealing with them. That's the nature. We, we navigate it, work with it, communicate, keep an open line, and try to do the best we can. Coach will go over here in front of me on the aisle. Jim Paul Scarbino with the Tennessee. I wanted to ask you about the local kid, Marcel Reed. What, what are your impressions? I'm sorry, I, I, you broke. I couldn't hear what you I'm said. I'm sorry. I wanted to ask you about Marcel Reed. Oh, okay, yes. uh, what, what your impressions are so far of him? In, in really excellent athlete, throwing natural throw of the football. He looks like it. I mean, that's what they're saying. I mean, I haven't been out there. Does he, he? You know, he just been in. The guys say he. You know, he's running well, training well. He's gaining weight. He looks big. He's a bigger already. I have seen him. He's put on some weight from the weight room and, and those things. And and uh, the guys say he throws it well. So I mean, you know, I, we loved him. He was a football, basketball guy and ranked highly in Mr. Football and Basketball in the state of Tennessee. And uh, comes from a coaching background where his dad was a coach a long time, so he gets it. So in my conversation, when I've seen him. Uh, it's off the field, you know, through the weight room or by the office. Just stop and talk with him, man. He's very happy. Happy. To be there and we're happy he's there i think he has a great upside i really do okay we'll go back over here to our right hand middle section yeah olin buchanan tech sags uh jimbo uh, how much did y'all miss bryce foster last year and and having him back in the lineup what kind of impact will that make I think significant. I mean, and not, not that it's anything that goes away, but I mean, you'd went through that whole year as a young center who is very physical, very athletic, very talented. And then we missed him right off the bat. I mean, he was sick the whole camp. We never had him the whole two a day camp or say two a day camp. We ain't no two a day camp anymore, is it? It's still have it, huh? The old uh, August fall camp uh, from what you have. But and get, when, when you got him back, you know, he had to get him into shape a little bit, and he st we still really started playing well. Then he got banged up again. And, you know, unfortunately for him, like that was one of the things that we had to deal with, which will make us stronger because we had young, you know, Wyckoff did a great job filling in. Matthew did. Now he's went in the portal, but also those other young guys got to play some. And, but Foster's a very, very talented guy and also a very intelligent guy, athletic, big. And uh, having that center, as you know, that's your quarterback. That's your second quarterback on the field. And, uh, I think the world of him, I expect him to have a great year. And when he does, it, it makes a huge difference on what we can do on offense, a big difference. Coach will go right in front of me in the second row. Hey, Coach. Uh, Mitch Lucas, Kilborn News Herald and, yes, and the footballbeat.com. I've gotten a chance to watch Reuben Owens last couple of years at El Campo, uh, but Kilgore in the second round mm. faced Reuben and able to get by him. Special, special athlete. Yes, sir. Uh, can, I'm wondering uh, if you could talk a little bit about not just Reuben, if you, any other freshman you've got coming in that we might keep an eye on. Well, you know, this class didn't get the hype of the other one did, but I'm going to tell you what, there are some really good players in there. I mean, some offensive linemen. Chase DeSantis and T.J. Shanahan, Tomlinson, those guys. I mean, those, that group is, is a really good group. Uh, the secondary group, 
Javon Thomas, Bavin Rogers, Brooks, all those guys in the secondary. The linebacker group came in, did really well up front with DJ Hicks. I mean, a really talented guy. We didn't have the numbers of guys. We didn't take as many. And then you got Ruben there. Mar like I said, Marcel's a guy that is under the radar a little bit. And, and, and our young receivers, I mean, Tease and Cottrell, two guys that really had good springs. You see them be productive in the spring game and came in. Uh, Jaden Platt is another one that's really, really gifted. Uh, Big Samu inside is a, is a defensive lineman from uh, how to Houston, I mean, he's 398, 90 pounds. I mean, we're getting him down in weight, but he can move and play. And you got that body in there as a run stopper and the things you got. Uh, Chan Chance Johnson is another. I mean, I'm trying to go through all of them. I, we were real happy. The guys that came in were good. The guys that have been in the summer have worked out, ran. The coaches see, you know, you watch their athleticism and their demeanor and their work ethic. I mean, it, we really liked that class. We really did. And I uh, hope there's no guys I missed. I'm sure there is. I'm going through it all off the top of my head. but. Uh, that was a, it was another good class. I mean, not the numbers, but I think the productivity and in the high and the high end parts of it, I think some really good guys, especially with guys that put their hand in the dirt and and play. And, and Ryan Kennedy, you know, from as a guy from up in the Dallas area that can really rush and be an athletic guy on the edge, too. So there's a bunch of guys in that group we like. Coach, we'll go in this middle section on the right aisle. Hey, Jimbo, Andy Witchfrey with On3. Given the recent Texas state law and the NCAA memo, what's the status of the 12th man plus fund and what's the future of that model? That has nothing. I, I don't know. I, I mean, that was not in my repertoire. That's for the athletic director and the lawyers and everybody else to, to sort through and do what they got to do. I mean, that's, that was what they did or come up with. And whatever that is, we'll navigate and work on based off the right laws in, in which we have. So I don't know that answer. I, I'm, I'm just navigating by the rules they give me and I ask compliance every day. And then we'd go from there. <laughs> coach, we'll go in uh, this center section right in front of me, about three miles back. Hi, there Coach. Uh, Jerry Jang, USA Today Network. It's been a little over a year since you're back and forth with Nick Saban in, in, in terms of recruiting. <laughs> um, where do you guys stand on your recruiting class, and um, how do you guys feel about your rankings um, in terms of recruiting? He said, how, where are we are in the recruiting class? And I, I don't know what the rankings are, but I, I like the guys. I like the guys. I don't ever follow rankings. Uh, as we, we follow the guys we want to get, and we, we recruit, and we feel very comfortable with those guys, our own evaluations and, and the things that go on. And sometimes, I guess, you agree with the – the guys out in recruiting, and sometimes you don't. That's why we always try to pick our own guys. But we like the guys we have. I think we've got a very good class going, and hopefully we'll continue to build on that because at the end of the day, you got you know, you got to recruit players. Okay, Coach, we'll go right in front of you, third row. Kirk? Yeah, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimbo, what all did Connor show you at quarterback last year, and how close is he to – being an elite quarterback in your mind? You know, I, I like both our guys, he and Max. But when Connor got a chance, you're talking about a guy who went in and played in some great games, took us to almost uh, one, one Ole Miss game on the road. We had tough and then come back and played a great LSU team and played extremely well in what he did. Through eight, never had a turnover, had eight touchdowns, high completion percentage, poise, understanding. He's athletic. Yeah, remember now, he probably would have been a top two or three round pick in the baseball draft if he goes a year ago. I mean, he, he's a, and he was a shortstop. So, I mean, this guy is a very gifted guy who can play and uh, very excited about his future and what he can be and, and just love the whole, his whole makeup and demeanor. Coach, we'll go right in front of me on this near aisle, straight in the hat. Uh, coach Fisher, Drew DeArmond, WZZN Radio, Huntsville, Alabama. You've been yes. a head coach in Power Five for over a decade. Mm -hmm. uh, you've won championships. Every year, chemistry is different on a football team. <laughs> There's high expectations at A&M. You didn't meet them last year. Yep. As a staff, as you, when you guys self-assess, what do you do this year to kind of make sure the chemistry is different and that this football team meets expectations? Well, just what I was talking about earlier, it's a great question. It really is because you talk about coaches can want all they want. Players got to manage a team and run it on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think it gets into your leadership of your team and not just leading guys, but how they can get guys to understand why it's important to do all the little things. Do you go to class? Do you go to study hall? You're practicing hard all the time, practicing, trying to find those inches. And I think the leadership of your football team is the key. I think the open line of communication, that's what's got me excited about this year. I love the leadership of our football team. And there's quite a few number of guys that have done it. And I think a lot of guys coming back for fourth and fifth years, which you don't have a lot, that, you know, some guys got banged up and came back for those situations that are doing a great job of setting examples of what things are doing. And we're around when we went, you know, we went to the Orange Bowl, won the Orange Bowl, we're number the four team in the country, had a chance to be in the playoff, all that. Guys that were on that team are productive in that team. And I think that part of it has me excited. And I think that's a key to it. It's just not what we say and how we do. We can adjust scheme. We can adjust that. But how they practice, how they go about things, how they do everything, and they're, all the little things they do away from ball, 
on, the, on their own time, whether they're seven on sevens, whether they're walkthroughs, all those types of things, and the film watching, all those, that those guys can lead and do that have, you know, I think that's the difference in your great teams and your average teams. And I think that creates within the culture. And I think we got a really good leadership group coming back, uh, you know, getting McKinley come back, getting Anais come back, getting Max Wright to come back. They, I mean, there's a ton of guys in that group that, that came back. Layton Robinson's a huge one up front I and mean, all those guys. And I think it makes a big difference. And I think that's what's got me excited about it. Coach, we'll go to the right middle section on the aisle. Yeah, Coach Brooks, Austin, Dogs Daily. You look at your schedule, and I know you kind of hit on this to start, but you got a four-week stretch of Auburn, Arkansas, Bama, and at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. How do you go about preparing your football game or football team to survive that slate? Right now, first of all, is get them conditioned and mentally tough, and how they work, how they do things in the summer, and the attention to detail we've had all year. And then how we practice in the fall to understand and what we have to do on a daily basis and not get out not worry about going all four. Listen, we have one day today. This is what we have to do. And you got to learn to, you know, the old adage, control what you can control. And everybody says, well, that's just, a, it's not a cliche. It's a fact. People wouldn't say it all the time. You know what I mean? And be accountable to each other. I mean, available, be accountable and be dependable. Until you do that, you can never, you, th those abilities are the three most important abilities you can have. Availability, accountability, and dependability. Until then, you can't use your mental and physical abilities until you have those three things. And you've got to do that on a daily basis because those habits are what's going to come out during that time. And what we form right now and how we practice, and not just practice. You don't practice till you do it right. You practice till you can't do it wrong. And I think that's where maturity comes in. I think that's where experience comes in. And we have to get those habits across right now so we can take those things on the road and what we have to do, one of those games in Dallas, one's in Tennessee, two of them are at our place. So, I mean, you would be able to do them whether you're doing them at home or on, on the road. And those have to be ingrained right now. The secret to this is no secret. It's going to be the fundamental things and good, great teams do ordinary things better than anybody else. And that's what's got to be ingrained through us through camp. And then the athleticism and the greatness and the, athlete, and the great plays will happen within the concepts of what you're trying to do. But you've got to practice that way to be able to take it and create habits in the big critical moments on the road and at home in, in those big games. We have time for two more questions. We'll start in the middle aisle in front of me, about three quarters of the way back. Hey, Jimbo. Alex Miller, War Report. Mm -hmm. Cameron Coleman, a lot of recruiting outlets were predicting that he would be probably staying a little bit closer to home. Texas A&M came in around the 11th hour. Could you just tell us a little bit more about the I'm not allowed to talk about any current recruits that aren't signed or on our campus. I'm not allowed to have any comments or anything of that nature. All I can say is that we were recruiting him, and that's it. I, I can't have any comments on Very that. Very well. All right, we'll take one final question. Coach, over here to our left. Yes, sir. Uh, Mark Passwaters with Rivals. Uh, Coach, you've mentioned that you're optimistic about the offensive line. Uh, you've said it several times already. Which is a key. Which is a key to everything. Give quarterback room, get be able to run the football, do the things you got to do. You gotta, in this league, you got to win up front. What have you seen that makes you think that they will improve considerably over what we saw? I think what we saw in the spring. And I think the health, I think their health, the experience, the leadership of the group, and the, and, the, and the failures in which they had. Failures in which we had as a, as a team, as a group, allowing those things of what they have to do and not wanting to let them happen again. Sometimes that's the greatest motivator you have and what you have to do. Now you have experience, you have knowledge, you have understanding what to do. And, and I see a different chip on their shoulder, and I see a demeanor and a leadership within that group that's been excellent. Now, again, that's all, that's all hearsay. Your action speaks so loud, I can't hear what you're saying. You got to go back and do it. Doesn't matter. We need to just be quiet, shut up, and go play. And then uh, we'll find out when it's all said and done. But to answer your question, I, I still feel I have confidence in those guys. I believe in those guys. Coach Fisher, thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you, y'all. Have a great day.